Say what's cracking YouTube Y'all already know how this gonna go It's your boy 16 to life Y'all down And I'm back with another story for y'all today So let's hop right into it Now this story right here takes place probably around 98, 99 I'm in Ironwood And Ironwood is in Blythe, California Now Blythe is going towards Phoenix, Arizona Now the story also takes place somewhere like around July So it's hot as a motherfucker down there by the time we wake up in the morning around 6, go to breakfast and come back to the building around 8, it's already like 103, 105, you know, depending on the particular temperature of that day. Sometimes it get up to like about 115, 119, so it's hot as hell down there. My job at the time, I'm a porter in the building. Now, the, uh, a porter is basically just a janitor, you know what I'm saying? I, I got cleaning duties. Now, like I'm telling y'all, the California prisons, the politics is crazy, right? It's like racially divided you know what i'm saying so the blacks and the asians we share one side of the day room the whites and hispanics they share another side of the day room now i may be off a little bit right here but i think it's like either 60 60 cells on the top on the bottom and uh or 80 somewhere around there but it's at least 100 at least 120 people in the building possibly more so um now normally the building like i have three or four porters you know four or five porters somewhere up in there i don't know why but at that point in time, it was only me and another porter, port, uh, another porter by the name of Lawyer. Now, Lawyer was about 50 years old, you know, uh, probably about 6'1", maybe somewhere around 190, 200 pounds, somewhere around there, right? Now, Lawyer also had a cane. Now, they called him Lawyer because Lawyer just wanted to do law work all day, legal work. He'd go to the law library. So he had went to the doctor or whatever, told him his back or his neck was hurt or his something shit. And he had a he had a light. He had a light duty chrono saying he couldn't lift no more than five pounds. So now, like I say, the bad thing about that is, though, it, we got three showers. We got a shower on the bottom tier. We got a shower on the top tier. Then it was two showers in the middle. Now, those showers was like two men's showers and they was neutral. So whatever, you know, anybody could use them. But So the blacks cleaned the top shower and then the uh, Hispanics and the whites, they cleaned the bottom shower. Like I say, now, since I'm the porter, it was my job to clean the showers. Lawyer, he didn't want to clean shit. Only thing he wanted to do was wipe the tables. Talking about the other porters told him he didn't have to do no cleaning. Well, the other porters was gone now. So, for, like I say, for some reason, it was only two of us. So, by the time I'm even started cleaning half one shower, man, I'm sweating like a motherfucker. So, I, you know, one day I get at lawyer. I said, well, hey, lawyer, listen, man, since you don't want to work and clean the showers and you got that... Uh, uh, limited duty chrono Why don't you get at the CEOs man And tell them they didn't assign you to a job that you can't do And unassign you That way they, I can get another porter in here That's going to help me clean these showers Because like I say now Anybody that's been in the pen When you go out You know when you go out to the yard You come back from working out Playing basketball Whatever you come back from your job You don't want to hop in no shower That no 20-30 people didn't been in And it's dirt and shit all over the place You know what I'm saying So that's something that was real big and like I say, plus, I get two off days. And on my off days, ain't nobody cleaning the showers. They nasty as a motherfucker. So then when I come back the other days, it's even more work. You know what I'm saying? So, lawyer, though, he don't want to do this shit. You know what I'm saying? So, okay. So, we going back and forth like this periodically for about a month. Now, one Saturday on my off day, I happen to be in early in the morning. I'm in the day room. Now, Soul Train is on. So, lawyer... I see him set down his motherfucking cane. But like I said, now before that, even before that, lawyer probably had, he goes to the he goes to the law library and he got a big old uh, uh, laundry bag. They give us like these mesh laundry bags. And he probably got at least 20 to 30 pounds of legal legal books in there. You know what I'm saying? It's lawyer books. So I know this motherfucker fake. And I didn't, I didn't been down there with him. We was on, we was on another yard together. So, you know, I didn't been down there with him a while to know that he's really, he ain't disabled. That motherfucker just, you know, that's his thing. So anyway, so this particular day though, he said Soul Train on. So they start doing the Soul Train line. So lawyers in that motherfucker dancing and shit. Woo! He over there doing his shit. He didn't set down his cane. Now he start. Okay. Now in the day room we got like we got some benches on one side. It's like uh, a, a long wooden bench where maybe four people can sit, and it's four rows. Then you got about a three foot space in between. Then on the opposite side, it's the same. Four more rows of benches. So he didn't set his cane on one of the benches, and he dancing down through the you know through the line like he on the soul train train line. He's kicking up his legs. He's spinning in circles and all type of shit. So I look at him, man. I just get mad all over again. I said, man, this motherfucker is playing me, right? You know what I'm saying? Because I'm I'm cleaning these showers, getting sweaty as a motherfucking shit, and this motherfucker over there playing games. So I go get at him again. I say, hey lawyer listen man you know you seem to be pretty mobile why don't you at least go get on a sign man so we can have the showers clean and shit 
because see another thing that upset me about him too after i cleaned the shower by him being a porter and we'd be out early in the morning he'd be the first motherfucker in the shower but you don't want to clean you know what i'm saying so a lot of people would take they would give us the laundry bags the big old giant mesh laundry bags a lot of people would would cut them and sew them make them smaller so they could turn them into like a shower bag and put their you know they soap deodorant you know what I'm saying? Boxers and stuff like that when you take to the shower. So he like, no, man, you know, he don't want to do that. I tell him, okay, well, listen, man, next time I clean these motherfuckers tomorrow, don't get your ass in these motherfucking showers on any day I clean them or it's going to be a problem. So he say, okay, well, why don't you act like you clean them today then? Why don't you act like? So I go over there to a shower bag. I grab his shower bag because he had it on the shower. I grab his shit and throw that motherfucker across the day room. You know, all this shit go flying out all over the place. I'm like, motherfucker, what's up? You know, what's up? So he go pick his shit up. He don't want to do no squabbing or whatever. So I, you know, I go to the cell a little later. My celly like, hey, what's cracking out there? I told him, you know. So then I get to think about it, right? Now, you know, I was raised where you respect your elders and all this and that. And I never want to seem like I'm no bully. So I thought about it. I said, you know what, man? I shouldn't have done that shit. So uh, I go back and I apologize to him, you know. You know, and I and I reiterate that like a couple of times. Hey, my bad, man. You know, I shouldn't have done that, man. And he was like, oh, man, that's all right. You know, I'm like, yeah, no, man, my bad. I shouldn't have thrown your shit like that. That was disrespectful. So he said, okay, man, it's cool. I ain't tripping. So I thought the situation was over with. So the next day, when, when we go when we go to uh, breakfast in the morning, when I come back, lawyer got his gloves on. Now, you know, of course, people put their gloves on when they ready to squab or whatever. So what's up, Jill? This is what he's saying. So you saying I can't get in the shower? So yeah, yeah. Today's your day at work. You say I can't. You say I can't get clean the showers. Uh, you know. You say I can't get in the shower. I say, hey lawyer, what's up? Why you tripping, man? I, you know, I talked to you yesterday. I apologized, man. I thought that shit was over. He said, no. But anyway, you told me don't get in the shower. You told me don't get in the shower. I said, okay, well fuck it then. I go in there and get my gloves. I'm like, what's cracking? So now when I'm starting to walk down to his cell. We had a cool, we had a cool uh, uh, CEO up in here, a black dude by the name of Kelly. He's up in the gun tower. He's seeing all this. He, he called me over. He said, hey, Willis, come over here, man. He said, man, let that shit go. Leave that shit alone, man. He said, don't make me do no work today. I don't want to do no work, work, work and write no reports. I said, okay, Kelly, I'm cool, man. I'm going to leave this shit alone, right? So I, I walk away. But lawyer is still woofing. Oh, no. You said I can't shower. You said I can't shower. You know, come on down in here. Come down to my cell. Tell me I can't shower. So, okay, now the way this dude is continuously and confidently inviting me to his cell, right? I'm thinking this motherfucker either must have a knife or he must be some old boxing champion from the 70s or some shit that I ain't never heard of, right? But I'm like, fuck it, whatever it is, I'm down there. I'm like, yeah, don't trip, I'm on my way. So now I'm walking down there, he's steady talking shit. Yeah, bring your ass on up in here. Bring your ass on up in here. So now he stepped back, you know, when I'm getting closer, he stepped back in his cell. So now when I start to get like a foot or two from the cell, all of a sudden this motherfucker come hollering. Ah! And he run out the cell and he rushed me. Now it's so unexpected that when he rushed me, I just dip down. I pick him up and I slam him. Bam! I slam him on the ground. Now when I slam him, he lands on his back and my chest is on his chest. So now I'm supposed to get this motherfucker the big brother, little brother treatment. You know how when you're fighting your little brother, you get him down, you put his arms out and you put your knees on his arms and you punch him in the chest. But I'm supposed to bust his face up. So when I go to pushing up on his chest to get some leverage or some some type of way my hand I guess must have been on his face one of my hands going to his mouth this motherfucker start biting my motherfucking hand like a motherfucker like I say I got the gloves on but he's still bite you he's literally doing this he's motherfucker like a mad ass dog and shit he biting the fuck out my hand now by this time also too Kelly didn't see this shit now he ain't came out the tower and he you know get down get down y'all stop breaking shit up y'all stop no he ain't even hit the alarm yet he like I'm telling y'all stop man stop stop that shit so but lawyer is 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 continually biting on my hand and, and gnawing Arr! so I start bam boom boom I start busting him up with the right hand giving him giving him rights you know across his face but this motherfucker is still biting my hand so finally Kelly pull out the mace and, and so when he do that, lawyer stop. But now I'm so mad, I'm so mad, I still, I go to punching him. And I get up, I'm punching him and kicking him. So now he go to macing me. Shh. Now they keep these big giant ass cans of mace on their side. The, the mace can is probably at least this big or bigger. But I'm so mad, well now I can't even really see where he is because now they didn't hit me with the mace. But I'm just swinging in the general area and kicking, you know. So they mace me, they mace me with the whole motherfucking can. So finally, I prone out, I lay down and shit, you know. And so they handcuff us. You know, they get us up, you know. Uh, 
Eventually, they walk us across the yard. The second I go outside, man, it's probably, I don't know, it felt like it was 115. Felt like somebody had lit a match on my motherfucking ass. The sun hit that goddamn mace, and woof, that shit just like felt like my whole motherfucking body was on fire. Plus, now my eyes is closed and shit. You know, I can't see shit. So I'm like, oh, this shit is burning the hell out of me, right? So they take me to the program office. They walk me in the program office, and they walk me to the back. Now, in the back, it's like a little, a little section. You know, it's outside. The program, the program office just so happened is right next to the kitchen. So I say, hey man, this shit is burning the hell up out of me, right? So now they go into the kitchen. They got these big old giant containers. They probably like two feet high. I don't know how wide, but they, they, they real big. They use them to serve, you know, the inmates when we go in there, um, like juice, uh, uh, coffee, you know, water at child and shit. So they fill these motherfuckers up and they start pouring them over my head. Now the cold part about that is it's like about 11 o'clock in the day. And so the pipes is hot as a motherfucker. Like I say, it's probably 115. So all they doing is pouring hot water over my head. Now this hot water ain't doing nothing but acting as an irritant to this motherfucking mace. It is burning me up. Plus now the mace already got me feeling like I can't breathe and shit. So I literally had to tell myself, man, calm down, you know, so because they pouring the water over my face. I just remember oh, I'm doing like this. I can't breathe and shit, you know. So now I'm thinking of I remember a time or two where I didn't seen dudes and got mace and had an asthma attack and died. Now I'm thinking to myself, man, I realize why these motherfuckers is killing. This shit is taking your motherfucking breath. If you got asthma, ain't no way you're going to be able to breathe. You know what I'm saying? So they they running back and forth to the kitchen. The guards pouring this water over my head. So this process seemed like it going for about 30, 40 minutes till I can finally even open my eyes. You know, I got my eyes shut tight because I don't want that mace to get more in there than it already is. So this shit going on for a while. Like I say, I'm burning up like a motherfucker. So eventually, you know, they, you know, it get to the point I can open my eyes and now they take me to the hole. So when, when I go to the hole, they give me my little, you know, my little sheets and shit for my bed. So I go in there, I make my bed up, I lay in the bed. That shit start kicking up again. So I'm in there burning like a motherfucker. So finally I see a guard walk walk past and I get at him. I say, hey man, I just got to a fight. I got made from head to toe. You think I can get a shower? Because in there, see, they normally let you shower every other day. But you know, he was cool. So he said, yeah, I'm gonna give you a three minute shower or whatever it was. So I hopped in the shower. As Soon as I hopped in the shower, all the water did was intensify that shit. It seems like when your pores open up, that shit just burn all over again so now i'm in the shower burning up like a motherfucker so i eventually i get out the shower i come back to the cell now of course that the mace is all in my sheet so then i take the sheets off and now i'm just laying on the plastic now i'm in that motherfucker burning up now and i'm like thinking like god damn you know i'm now now i'm thinking like i need to call somebody and protest this shit who the fuck can i call you know i'm i'm seriously mad at this shit you know i'm thinking like damn motherfucker need to call maxine waters or, or reverend al sharpton or some motherfucking body and let them know this goddamn shit ought to be illegal because this shit is all in my hair man that shit is burning the motherfucking hell up out of me so now i'm laying in there like okay now i'm a motherfucker really start i'm trying to i'm evaluating evaluating my life decisions you know and especially my future decisions with that goddamn mace so i'm telling myself if i ever get into it again i'm making a quick exit plan i'm gonna get the fuck out fuck out the way of that mace like i told y'all in a story it actually helped me not get caught in a fight one time when when we got into it with the boy when my homie got into it over the poker game so as soon as i heard him say y'all uh, get down get down i hurry up pew, i hurry up and slid up off that motherfucker because i'm scared of that mace i don't want another encounter with that motherfucking mace so me being mace shy helped me not get caught up that one particular time so so eventually they call me you know they call me in there i'm in a i'm in the hole they call me the captain call me the captain come see you on money so anybody that's ever been to ironwood at that time the captain was captain Hal. y'all know captain Hal, tall skinny dude long dark black dude with the long dread hey what's going on convict you was on my yard fighting what the hell are you over there fighting for convict so i'm just sitting back he said yeah well did you at least win the fight did you whoop the motherfucker's ass so i'm in here laughing you know so they end up sending me back to a yard they end up sending lawyer to b yard i go back to the same cell and everything and shit so now when i go back for the next three or four days that shit was still burning me anytime i put lotion on i take a shower man that shit was burning the hell the hell up out of me right so like i say man that made me decide that anytime i get into a squabble i'm trying to miss that motherfucking mates by all means now like i say too oh boy that i got into it with he was biting on my hand and shit man my whole motherfucking uh, uh fingernail turned purple for about eight nine months till that motherfucker finally fell off and shit but if i didn't have them gloves on that motherfucker would have bit my finger off you know what i'm saying and so that's the thing sometimes you know i'm you think that you're supposed to go in there and squab and you never know what a dude have on 
have on his mind. You know, that's why in the pen, man, it's always best to be respectful. You know what I'm saying? Try to stay out the way because, you know, you might go in there to squab and a dude got a knife. He he fight. He trying to fight to the death. You know, he trying to kill you or whatever. So, uh, you know, that taught me a lesson right there. You know what I'm saying? Always be prepared because you never know what's going to happen up in that motherfucker. You can't underestimate a motherfucker because he old or he look old or whatever. Like I say, dude wasn't old, but he was about 50. You know what I'm saying? So, but anyway, that's my story on that, man. Y'all stay safe. Oh, yeah. Resume normal program.